Hi guys, welcome back to the channel um, and welcome to another video on the ZX9R. Now obviously, um, you, if you've seen the last episode, you'll see the stage that we've got to with this. Basically all the body works off and um, what we're going to be doing next is obviously delving into removing all the other components um, and having a look at what we've got and then start the refurbishment process once it's all apart. Um, what I did want to do very briefly is just discuss a few of the items that I've got here on the bench. Um, because these are part, some of the parts that I've collected um, over the last couple of months uh, for this project. Uh, to start with, I've got a set of header pipes from uh, an 01 model, so this is off an E model, um, and these are um, different diameter pipe work um, and supposedly give a better um, throttle response and a bit of a boost to the mid range. Um, so, uh, yeah, so those uh, I picked them up fairly fairly cheaply actually. I don't think I paid a great deal of them. I think they're around 40 quid delivered, I think. Uh, anyway, moving on. What I've got here, uh, I've got an exhaust system. Now this isn't off of a, um, it definitely isn't off of a C model <coughs> because the C model um, link pipe doesn't have this bracket. Um, so I don't know if this is off an E model or not. The number on the cans uh, between the one on the bike and this one aren't the same, although they look identical in every way. Um, as it happens, this, this can isn't actually in as good a condition as this one. This one's pretty good. There's not a lot of scratching on it. The only real problem I've got with this one is here, the little the little shroud that goes over um, between the link pipe and the can, because it's obviously taken a bash just there, um, and I need a new one of that. So this link pipe does have one, which hasn't been bashed. Um, and I think I paid, I think I paid 20 quid for both of these from an auto jumble from like Cop Doc Bike Show or somewhere like that um, for, for both of them. I don't really actually need that bit, um, so that can go on the shelf, it'll be, you know, it'll be fine, or I may, I may just sell it on, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah. Next, as I mentioned in the last episode, um, the side stand is too short, uh, because obviously the back of the bike has been jacked up using um, shorter dog, uh, dog bones on the shock linkage. Um, and in order to make the side stand effective, what I need to do is um, extend it. So I've actually got another side stand in which I can hack apart. Well, make and make a longer one out of the two. So um, yeah, I'll be getting a welder out and doing that at some point. Um, next, what I've got in here is I have a genuine Kawasaki clutch cover with all the uh, with all the little ancillaries like the side glass, the gaskets, and everything that um, go into uh, obviously putting it back into use on the back. Now this is brand spanking new. Um, I've had this for quite some time. I bought this as a new old stock and again I got this at a bit of a bargain so I was quite um, I was quite pleased when I managed to pick this up. Um, so obviously I've been keeping it all together in the uh, in its little bag here looking after it because the one on the bike has a massive has a massive scuff on it just there as you can see so uh, yeah we'll um, we'll be replacing that with this brand new one and making that look tidy again. I'll put that back in the bag, keeping it safe. And then lastly, what I want to talk about is in this massive box. Um, in this massive box, this is a Z1000 gearbox. So, um, obviously, Z1000 gearbox is a great upgrade for the C model um, ZX9R because, of, as everybody knows, the gearboxes are made of chocolate. Now, I've got an entire transmission in here from the shift drum, shift forks, everything, absolutely everything. Um, obviously there's a few little things that need to be done in order to fit it to the ZX9R. There's a couple of little parts in need, like a couple of brand new circlips and stuff like that. Um, but obviously when the engine's out and the cases are split, we'll be going through um, fitting a Z1000 gearbox into a C model ZX, uh, ZX9R. So yeah, so that's quite exciting. Um, that I had to actually import from America because um, they're quite hard to get hold of, they're quite hard to come across, and for some reason in the, in the UK they're, they're silly money. Now I, I got this from the States and I think I paid about 150 quid, including shipping, and that was 40 to 50 pounds cheaper than anywhere I could find in the UK, so it was a bit of a bargain really. Okay, anyway, moving on, let's delve back onto the bike and start taking some more parts off. Uh, 
Okay, so what I'm going to do basically is start stripping out the back end of the bike. Now, obviously, with the undertraining to come off, along with all of this stuff that's fitted onto it, like the CDI unit, you know, start motor relay, all that good stuff, uh, reg reg uh, here. Um, this, what well, I'm not even sure it's actually connected to anything. Um, there is some wiring that's going places. Hopefully, none of that's actually interfering with anything, and then um, we'll get away with uh, just cutting it all out um, and then uh, obviously just unbolting stuff and putting it to one side and seeing what we've got that we can salvage for, for the rebuild. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at the back and I'm, I'm expecting some of these fasteners to fight me because they've been in there a long time and obviously steel fasteners into aluminium. Uh, into aluminium frames do like to corrode together uh, particularly if this has been ridden in all weathers which it probably has because it certainly hasn't been cherished uh, I think that goes without saying so okay so let's put that down there and see what we got right we've got a couple of nuts holding the rear tail light in position and then this little connector here for the tail light and then that's removed i do like the tail light on the uh, on the zx9 r I, I do remember years ago a friend of mine had a zx6r there's this weird little clip thing you could get which went between them which made it look like two separate lights i don't even know if you probably see them anymore um but i just thought it was a neat little touch it actually looked quite nice so i might even see if i can find one So far, so good. And a few nuts and washers to recover under here. Now, I bet you that those screws there don't come out very easily. And there are plastic components on this, so I've got to be very careful what I do with regards to heat. So that might take some uh, effort, so I may, uh, I may not bother with that right now and come back to it later but there's the tail unit off uh, sorry the tail light and uh, obviously the brake light off um, looking pretty good there's a little sleeve inside the rubber mountings for it and yeah that looks um that looks pretty swell uh stick that down there one thing i did notice is when i took this off the that bracket sorry that bush there didn't actually seem to be behind it um, so it looks like it was actually on the wrong way around because it should have been on like that I think so it was actually sitting on it was somebody who would obviously fit it the wrong way I think because it was on the wrong way around and that wasn't on it um, so uh, yeah yeah again nothing on this bike is surprising me um, pop them down there. we've got some uh, velcro down here for something, I've no idea what that's for. Perhaps where the toolkit went, but I don't know why there's Velcro. In fact, I'm wondering if that's for the toolkit. I don't know. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to look at some parts diagrams. I think we've got random bolts in here. I've got a, a random spanner. Your guess is as good as mine. Right. I think what we'll do now: we'll take off the little luggage straps. I do like these little luggage straps. I think they're quite neat. Um, I've got a spanner in here to fit them somewhere. There we go. Eight mil, all of these. All four. Now, with these, they're looking a bit sorry for themselves. But um, instead of buying new ones of these, these will actually clean up and look absolutely amazing after they've been replated. So I will be replating things like that. You know, things like that will do really well from a, from a replay, so that's what I'll be doing with those. Obviously this bracket comes off with those ones. 
Now obviously, because I'm videoing all of this, I've got the luxury of being able to go back over the video and see where stuff came from. <laughs> which is quite a, you know, which is a bit of a boon really. Um, so uh, later on when it, you know, a couple of months down the line and I forget where everything goes, I just have to go back through the videos and away we go. Um, now, uh, where are we? We've got, a, we've got some 10 mil bolts on the side, which, are they 10 mil? No, they're not, that's, that's a 12 mil anyway, that is a 10 mil. A 10 mil spanner somewhere. There we go. We've got some 10 mil bolts on the side, which are holding this tray to the frame. Well, certainly at the back, anyway. And what I thought was a captive nut is actually spinning now, so. What I need to do is grab the ratchet. Same on this side. So we're getting somewhere. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, all the parts I've just taken off so far, I'm going to box them up, label them so I know where they go, and then uh, we'll look at this area next to CDI and stuff like that. Right, let's have a look at this alarm. Now, there's loads of cables there that have been disconnected from whatever they were connected to. There's a couple of grounds that go, there must be grounds that go to the two bolts on the regulator rectifier, and then you've got all of this behind this. Um, behind this uh, cable tie and then we've got this little uh, thing here which I'm assuming is a tilt switch of some kind which actually moves around which is probably not ideal for a tilt switch um, we've got a cable that comes down to the battery positive which we should be able to get out quite easily it must have gone in there fairly easily so if we pull that out of there like so and then we've got another wire which comes down again behind these cable ties and comes down here now this goes down to the rear brake light switch and as you can see it's been spliced in somewhere so I'm just gonna cut it um, I'm not gonna mess around just pull that out of there pull this out of there Grab my screwdriver, which I've got here, and undo one of the screws holding this tilt switch in place. There we go. Get that out of the way. And then I think all we need to do is disconnect these two grounds from the regulator rectifier.
pretty sure that is it. Obviously behind this tie wrap. And there we go. That's the alarm. That is going in the bin. Don't need that. Right. While we're here, obviously we've taken the bolts out for the regulator rectifier and that is a tight connector. Oh yeah. Now what these like to do is these like to fur up if they get a bit of water in and um, have a tendency to take the state or, and all the regulator rectifier down with them. Now this is a uh, this is the stock regulator, regulator rectifier and it's probably the one that was fitted to the bike originally. Um, I can only assume that it's working but we can test that um, um, before we uh, go to refit it or I could just upgrade it with one of my um, Shindigen, um FH series regulator rectifiers uh, before we uh, before we reassemble it. Okay now I think what we'll do next is unmount the CDI and all of this gubbins down here and then we'll probably be in a position to pull the, under, the, the tray itself completely out. Okay, CDI then, we're just going to disconnect from the loom. There we go. There is, there's a factory label here, ZX900C2, no oil. Um, delivery sticker, I guess. It's pretty cool. Um, we can disconnect the starter solenoid move that over there out of the way for the moment and there's that part of the loom out of the way right the CDI is just held on with a couple of bolts and the captive feels like it side seems to be hmm no, they don't seem to want to come out right what I'm gonna do I'll leave that in there until we've actually taken the whole tray out and um, I, I, I don't have the, any restrictions I can get into both sides dead easy and uh, we'll be golden right take that relay off we've got bits of loom under here which aren't really affecting anything at the moment box with a lot of fuses in. There's your fuse box there, look. Okay, um, the only thing now that I can see attached to this that we need to remove is the rear brake reservoir and that's it. That is literally all I can see. So, yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll we'll get the rear brake reservoir off and then see about maneuvering it maneuvering it out. Now obviously we've got these little lugs here, so I'm not sure how easy it's going to be. Um but yeah, we'll get there. In fact it may actually be easier if I take the rear uh, the rear indicators off just so that they don't foul the exhaust and stuff. Um, but I'll have a look at that and uh yeah, let's uh, let's crack on. Right, what I've done, I've, uh, I've removed the indicators, so there's nothing, the indicator's not interfering with the exhaust now. It's literally just one nut holding them on um, and just a couple of connectors um, onto the loom. Uh, and then they both came off dead easy. Uh, the, the nuts were quite rusty, but um, they, they didn't put up too much of a fight. Now, um, the only thing I think that is left remaining on this is literally the uh, rear brake master cylinder. So, it'll undo it, and to be fair, it goes into a rubber like well nut, and <laughs> it's brought the steel element of it with it because it's pretty goosed. Um, so, that'll need replacing. Um, again, not a great surprise. 
Now, um, I think we're there. I think all we need to do now is literally just slide it out. Now, um, what I do have to do is obviously get these tangs around the frame. So I think the best thing to do is to bring it forwards before I go backwards. Um, and I mean, that's easier said than done. Uh, actually, there is a there is a small relay down here, which I didn't notice before, just under the frame there. Um, yeah, so perhaps we could shift it to one side, get one side out like this. And then the other side, and then obviously maneuver everything out of the way. Oh, and there we are. It wasn't too, you no, know, it wasn't too challenging. A little bit of foam in the battery tray. Uh, the only thing I do need to do is obviously remove the uh, CDI. Um, but these are just spinning with it, um, so I'll get some grips on them. And uh, yeah, that is uh, that is that. I think what we'll do next is um, whip the airbox off and see what horrors uh, lie inside there. Um, I've got a feeling there's going to be field mice and everything, um, as I said in the last, in the last episode. Um, yeah, uh, so I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, the set of the bike, I wouldn't be surprised to find that there's no air filter in it. But, you know, we'll have a look in a minute. Um, right guys, let us uh, let me get all of this stuff tidied up, put away, and then we'll get this air box off. Right then, so that's the end of the tray out. All the bits uh, tagged and marked and boxed up. Next, air box. So, um, I'm a little bit nervous about what I'm gonna find under here, because uh, it's probably a 15 year old air filter in it all sorts of things. Um, while I'm here actually one thing I want to notice is um, the rivet nut for the, uh, in the frame where the tank mounts is actually missing so I need to re replace that. I'll probably take that one out and replace them both. Got a rivet nutting machine or a rivet nut gun I just say. Having no, uh, no other stuff there. I was able to get it back. I wouldn't have been able to had I not done Right then, abracadabra. Oh, I am surprised. It is filthy, but at least there's one in it. And yeah, it's, it's not too terrible in here. It's not as bad as I expected. So what we need to do now is remove the rest of the air box. Um, these two screws, and I think that'll leave the trumpets for the carbs behind. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but we'll find out shortly. Take the uh, this hose off and that one. And then one, two, three, four screws. Side, which is going to be a pain. 
to get off actually because it's been orientated really really awkwardly hmm what idiot's done that come on there we go yeah that was a pain as you can see all of these hoses are perished and require replacement anyway so yeah right let's get these screws out Heath Robinson Jubilee clips on this side. Well, two of them actually. I don't know whether they're both doing anything or not. Yeah, that seems to be disconnected. Right, let's pull her out. And there we go. That is the air box removed. Drain. Here we can see the top of the engine now. Um, obviously the coils, carbs, all of that good stuff. The carbs will be going in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and I'll be getting a good uh, a good refurb and a rebuild as, as you would expect. Um, so I think what I'll do, I'll leave this episode here um, because uh, I think the next thing we're going to be looking at is probably taking the engine out. But I'll take the carbs off separately. I'll take the carbs off first and then we'll probably drop the engine out and I'll make that an episode on its own. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully, guys, you enjoyed this video and you'll stick around for the next one. So, uh, yeah, if you like it, then hit that like button, subscribe, um, and uh, join me on the socials if you want to have a chat about this project. Um, it'd be good to hear from you. Um, and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll see you all for the next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye now.